excited to cook with you. I'm coming to you at about, it's two o'clock my time. I'm on Vancouver Island, so it's five o'clock your time if you're in the east and other times if you're elsewhere in the world. But I just thought this might be a good time in case you're thinking about dinner, if you're starting to crave some French fries, because I know a lot of us stop on the way home for things like potatoes, French fries, that kind of thing. Um, like a burger and fries is a pretty common takeaway thing. And so it just made me think this is what I was making for my dinner tonight and I wanted to make it for you to show you just how easy it can be to make decadent, delicious, tasty foods from real whole foods that taste like we're really indulging and yet they're just really whole natural foods that are delicious. So I'm excited to cook with you. Let me just see. Hi Nikki, nice to see you. I'm glad you're with me. And so here's what we're gonna do. I came to you live a few minutes ago to show you the first step, but in case you missed that video, essentially what I did was I took a big pot of cold water just enough water to cover my potatoes and you can use any potatoes i'm using the little baby roasting potato like the mini um like kind of like a fingerling potato but the little baby potatoes i just really like those ones um you can use any another really good roasting potato would be a russet potato or a yukon gold and what i would recommend in that case to make what i'm making which is these french fries they don't look like french fries i'm not bothering to cut them into matchstick you know, uniform pieces. I'm just too lazy for that. I mean, I'm not lazy, but I don't like using that word. I'm just not interested in spending that much time in the kitchen to make something to be matchstick perfect. I'm just gonna use the real natural raw vegetable that's gonna look like this, and then we're gonna put them in the oven. And I'd rather just keep it simple, that's my thing. If you want to make matchsticks and make them into actual french fry looking things, you can definitely do that. Then what you'll wanna do is probably do your matchsticks first. You would probably wanna soak them in cold water to get rid of the starch, and then you're gonna wanna do other things. I'm just not gonna teach you that today. That's just not the way that I'm going to do it because it just is too time consuming. I want something yummy, delicious, and fast that's tasty, nutritious, and amazing. And so many people think the potato is this indulgent, only every once in a while allowed cheat meal treat, you know, this, this thing that we have to feel guilty about. And I just say rubbish to all of that. I don't buy into that at all. Potatoes are a real whole food. They are a root vegetable. They are a tuber. They are delicious. They are filled with amazing nutrition. It's usually what we end up doing to them, like frying them in hydrogenated oils, which basically you know, degrades any kind of health benefit and takes it down to being a junk food, for sure. So my whole goal in life is to help inspire other people to live well by using real whole foods in recipes and in ways that are easy, that are fast, that are tasty and delicious, so that we can live feeling like we eat like kings and queens while also preserving these precious bodies of ours and our health and feeling so good in our lives. I just want everybody to know that my life is not all about sacrifice. I've had a lot of people that say, Sarah, I just, I can't do it. I can't live like that. I'm just not willing to give up X, Y, Z. And I just want to say my lifestyle is not at all about giving up or sacrifice or deprivation or feeling like boo hoo me, I don't get to eat this, that and the other thing. Just the way I don't feel that being an alcohol free person, someone who lives sober, I don't think of that as boo hoo me, I don't get to drink. I look at it as I don't have to drink. And I just love that totally flip of the switch, different approach to living life where it is not about starvation or sacrifice or deprivation, but rather an opportunity and an invitation to live well. If I want to be upright and able and agile and energetic and feeling like I look as young as I feel inside, when I'm 80 and 90 and 100, I have a goal to become a centenarian, somebody who lives to 100 and beyond, then I gotta make choices today. It's too late when I'm 80 or 70 or 60, right? It's a little, I mean, it's never too late. But if I really wanna live well into my longevity, into my later year, latter years, I have to start now. When's the best time to plant an oak tree? 50 years ago. When's the next best time? Today. 
The only time we have is right now. So in this time that we have together, I'm excited to cook for you. I am making my healthy french fries. They're really roasted potatoes, but they end up tasting crispy and golden and delicious. Well, they don't taste crispy and golden. They look crispy and golden and they taste delicious and you can feel really good about it because the potato packs a huge punch when it comes to nutrition. We see tons of micronutrients in them, um, namely fiber for sure, helps with you know anyone that has digestive issues. Fiber is wonderful for guarding against constipation and helping you to just move things through. They call fiber the toothbrush of the body, um, you know, of the vegetable world. Is, and that's what happens is that we really get to move things along. We might think of potassium with bananas, but really potatoes pack a huge punch when it comes to potassium. And people might think that, you know, I have to stay from, away from potatoes if I have high blood pressure. No, we need to stay away from french fries doused with tons of sodium, that's for sure. But the potato is really high in potassium, which naturally helps us to lower our blood pressure. There are other reasons in the potato that help us lower our blood, blood pressure as well, including calcium and other things. But um, honestly, don't look at the potato as this you know, this cheat or this, you know, this bad food or this like thing that you can't ever have. Obviously, we don't want to eat a hundred of them at a time. And obviously, we are looking at, I shouldn't say obviously, and so we do need to look at a potato as our starch on the plate, as our carbohydrate on the plate, not as a vegetable. We want to make sure, so for tonight, when I make my dinner, I'm making a big, huge, I, I'm going to make a fatouche salad. It's a Lebanese-inspired salad. I will share that with you. I don't know if I'll share it tonight, if I'm going to do another live, maybe I will, but I will be serving these potatoes with eggs, that is one of my favorite things to serve it with. Um, I just love eggs and potatoes together. Call me crazy, but Roger and I often have eggs for dinner. We don't tend to have them at breakfast time, but we love eggs. So I will be doing up some eggs in the pan, served alongside a few potatoes. They store really well. And then I will be serving it with a nice big salad because I know that the potatoes aren't the veg. The vegetables come separately. These are, you know, definitely a treat, something that we don't have every single day, but they are delicious, they are nutritious, and they are amazing. Potatoes also pack a ton of folate, which is super important when it comes to guarding against cancers. There's a lot of research to show that folate can really help us to, to guard against them. So we want to do that. We are creating cancer cells all the time. Our body is constantly, you know, killing those cancer cells and keeping us healthy. But we need to do our part too. Our bodies need us. Our bodies rely on us to help them to do their job. And sometimes we get stuck in the pattern of, you know, I want, you know, I'm craving, I really wanna have this, it's a treat, it's for me. And then we forget that we are depleting our own health and then we go through life not feeling as well, not feeling as good as we could. And then we sometimes tend to get into a real spiral where the only thing that helps us to feel good is to eat more junk. And then it's just this vicious circle because of the dopamine response that comes when we eat things like refined white sugar and hydrogenated oils like potato chips and french fries that are not serving our health. But a real whole potato forevermore. I want you to make this recipe and feel really, really, really good about it. So again, to recap, I had a pot on the stove with cold water covering my potatoes. I added about a half a tablespoon or whatever of Himalayan salt, my favorite kind of salt. Why? It maintains 84 trace minerals in it. It's not just sodium and chloride, which is what we get in table salt. It's got all of those trace minerals. So we want to maintain that. I put a lid on my pot turned my stove on to high, allowed my potatoes to come to a boil, and I didn't need to do what I shared in the first video, I didn't need to tent my pot. My pot was big enough that the water wasn't bubbling over. So I was able to leave my lid on and I was able to leave my heat on high. If you're finding that the, the lid's going crazy and it's bubbling over, you first of all might have too small of a pot for the amount of potato that you have, but secondly, what you can do is turn your heat down a little, tent um, the lid a little bit, me meaning allowing some of the steam to escape, and then allowing that to boil away for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're going to turn off your stove, you're going to carefully drain the water. I grab a dishcloth and I cover the lit pot lid and then I let a little bit of space to, you know, I leave a bit of space, 
dump out the water, and then I dump my potatoes onto my parchment lined baking sheet. You could also use Silpat, which is even better. It's the silicone based liner that I don't have. Um, but I have parchment and I reuse my parchment several times. That's a little tip. If you're doing things that are easy like this or cookies, because it slides off so well, you can reuse a piece of parchment several times. Like I've used this one already probably three or four times. So then what you're gonna do, and I'm hoping you can see, yep, yeah, I think you can. What I do is I just threw them onto this pan and then I take a fork and I gently press them down. Don't worry if you completely smash one apart, who cares? Just kind of mold it back together and move on. So it's sort of a gentle, firm pressure. I know that doesn't really explain how to do it, but I'm gonna try to show you. I've tilted my camera a little bit in hopes can you see what I'm doing? Wait, which way do I go? See, everything's backwards, right? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to show you and let me know if you can see what I'm doing. Roger, can you see what I'm doing? I can't see with the lag, you have to just assume. Oh, okay, Roger says because there's a lag, he doesn't know. <laughs> anyway, so I'm taking my fork and I'm pressing it onto the potato and gently, did you see that? They sometimes turn out looking like little mini baby Pac-Mans, if you can see that, right? So then you just set it aside and go on to the next one. So like I say, it's kind of, some of them are a little tricky and then all of a sudden it'll just like completely explode, but don't worry, so that one's pretty good. And then so you can kind of go quickly, you don't have to take forever and it like, it doesn't matter if they don't look perfect. Who cares? No one cares, they taste delicious. I've even sometimes when I have used like a Yukon Gold or a Russet and chopped them into uniform pieces, done the same boiling method that I shared with you, just be checking on them while they're boiling to make sure that they're not undercooked or overcooked. Just check on them a couple times maybe, especially for your first few times. And um, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. <laughs> Roger's laughing at me. Um, anyway, I was telling you when you, doesn't matter if they, oh, and so I have sometimes like they've just kind of become just this whole pan of just potato mess. I still go for it. I still put the oil on, which I'm going to show you to do now. And I've still roasted them. And then it just ends up sort of being like a hash brown mess on my pan. No one complains. They're still delicious. Okay. So the next step after you've taken your, you've boiled your potatoes, you've drained them. You've poured them onto your, your parchment lined baking sheet. You've smashed them down a little bit with your fork. Now you're gonna grab a big spoon and avocado oil. Why do I love avocado oil the most? First of all, avocado oil has a really high smoke point. So because we're cooking these at 425 degrees, I should have mentioned that, you're turning your oven on to 425 even before, that's your first step. That's even before you start, um, boiling your potatoes because by the time you're done with boiling the potatoes your oven will be preheated so all i did there was i drizzled can you see yes i drizzled avocado oil on top of my potatoes now i prefer to salt them at the end you don't have to salt them at all. If you're really trying to stay away from sodium, don't even bother. But if you like a little bit of salt, I prefer to do it after they've been roasted. So I'm gonna leave my salt aside, but just to know that's what I do, because I probably won't be coming back to you at the end. Um, and so I just go ahead and I'm gonna pop these in the oven, I'm going to roast them, and I will show you what they end up looking like in a picture or live, I don't know what I'm gonna do, at the end. And then you're gonna see, so they're gonna go in there for, oh, I can't remember what I say. I think 10 to 15 minutes, I have a recipe. If you want this recipe, PM me, or put your email address in the comments below, PM me your email address and I will send you the, the recipe. But I'm gonna set my timer. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna set them right now for 10 to 12 minutes. I think I'll do 12 minutes. And after 12 minutes, I'll check them. And if they're looking nice and golden, I will flip each one over and go ahead and roast them again for maybe another 10 or 12 minutes, remove them from the oven. And as soon as I remove them, I'm gonna give them a nice sprinkle of Himalayan salt and then serve them. So I hope that's helped you. Let me just see, um, okay. Hi everybody, nice to see you. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, you're all so sweet. Okay, hang on. I see that there is a question. 
So hang on. Nikki, thank you for reassuring me that potatoes are healthy. I have got the impression that they aren't good for my health. Love your passion, girl. I love your passion too, Nikki. And you know what? It's just unfortunate what's happened to the potato. Sure, does the sweet potato have that beta carotene? And right, like it's got all those extra benefits to it. And it's, you know, I just get a little tired of people feeling like they, you know, I had somebody say to me not that long ago, a couple of years ago though, um, that they wouldn't eat, so they, they were struggling with obesity, and I understood, I could relate, I said I can understand, I get it, I mean I haven't been obese, but I understand the addictive nature of food, I certainly understand sugar addiction and addiction in general, and so we were having a conversation about celery, I put celery in my morning smoothie, why? Because it's super good at reducing inflammation. So we were talking about celery, and they said, oh I have to stay away from celery because it's high in sodium, and I have high blood pressure, and I just had to make the argument that, you know, celery isn't what got us into this situation. It's the sodium from french fries and chips and junk foods and refined processed packaged food-like products that gets us into trouble. The potato on its own, the beautiful potato minus the sour cream, the bacon, the cheese, the junk that we might put on it or deep frying it in hydrogenated oils with a ton of sodium on top of them, that's what gets us in trouble. We have to get back to basics. We have to look at what has happened to our health since the Industrial Revolution, since the you know 40s and 50s and 60s where we started really seeing a lot more processed, refined foods and all of this sugar. If you look at the history of big sugar, it becomes really clear what's happened to us. And if we can stay away from processed, packaged foods, get back to basics, make food out of food, make recipes out of real food, you can forget all of the rest. My life is so simple, I live with such joy and such freedom because of the fact that I don't abide by any of those rules whatsoever. Some people who know me think that um, because I wrote a book called The 28 Day Kick the Sugar Challenge that I never eat sugar, not true. I live my life eating real whole foods and I'll be sharing with you tons more recipes that call for natural sweeteners. If you really do know me, you'll know that I eat sugar. It just tends to be in the form of dates or apples or, or bananas or you know whatever else or a more natural sweetener like a maple syrup or a honey or a coconut palm sugar as opposed to refined white sugar that does nothing but harm my health. There is, just like Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking, where he has the chapter on benefits of smoking, and of course the page is blank, chapter 21. Same thing with refined white sugar. Benefits of refined white sugar are zero. They are non-existent, they do not exist, and big sugar has simply raised and raised and raised quietly, our tolerance over decades lied to us about the dangers of sugar, and this is where we've ended up with all, and I say sugar, meaning all refined carbohydrates. Our body looks at a package of chips, crackers, you know, cookies, cereal, whatever, and even if the first ingredient isn't sugar, even if it's refined wheat flour, that's sugar to the body. That's what the that's what the body sees as sugar. And then often the second or third third ingredient is some type of a variant of refined sugar. That is what our body doesn't want. So all of this rant, Nikki, to say enjoy a potato. Do I want you to eat this entire pan that I've just made in one sitting? No, this will do probably four or five you know different meals for me and for Roger. We'll have maybe three or four per serving, and that's. Awesome, it tastes delicious, they're super yummy, we can feel really good about it, they're delicious, and then we move on, right? Like we don't gorge on this. So if you're feeling like, yeah, but if I made that many, I would probably eat them, then only make as many as you want for your one meal that evening with your, with your kids or your spouse or whatever, and then don't have any leftovers. If you're gonna be tempted to then go back to the pan over and over, then just make however many you're gonna have for tonight, and then it's over and you've had your yummy potato fix. You won't feel the craving so hard to go through the drive through and get that burger and fries combo meal because now you know how to make it at home yourself. 
That's a big strategy for me is that I constantly will say, no, we don't need to stop there. We don't need to do that. Even when I get cravings, we all do. We have these reptilian brains that are like, hurry up, find calories, easiest way possible. And we live in a society where there is a drive through on every corner. I am not magic. I'm not somebody who's figured out how to completely eradicate every craving I've ever had. Of course not. And sometimes I do succumb to those cravings and I make the choices that I would rather not make, but then I make in the moment and then I move on and I, you know, make better choices afterwards. But I just feel like we've just gotten to this place where we just forget the power of real food and the ability for those choices that we make to help us to make more and more and more choices that lead us to feeling our best. That's all that momentum is. We gotta create some momentum by making the choices that leave us feeling our best in the moment so that we can refer back to that file and go, you know, as much as I'm craving that burger and fries from whatever Golden Arches or whatever burger chain you like that's on the, on the corner, I can go home and even make my own homemade patties, veggie patties, other types of, you know, meat patties if you are a meat eater. You know, you can make that at home and then make these french fries on the side and feel so, so, so good about it. So I hope this has served you. I hope you enjoy your potatoes. Let me take a look to see if I can show you anything. I could probably show you this. It's not, they're certainly not done. They are certainly not done. But I'm going to show you. So this is after, this has been six minutes. So you can see they're starting to get a little, a little bit. They're happening. They're starting to happen. And so I'm going to leave those in for at least another four minutes. I think probably, I'm going to turn, I'm going to definitely set it for longer. I think probably, yeah, I was going to say, Roger, I think it's 20 minutes that I do them for before flipping them over. But again, don't worry. If you want this recipe, uh, I can easily email it to you. I have it. It's also on my blog. If you type in on my blog at saratalksfood.com, if you type in French fries, I shared, that I shared this recipe a couple years ago on my blog. So you can find it there too. So I hope that's helped. Um, just let me see if there is anything else. Would love to know how to make zucchini fries. Yum, says Terry. Hmm, zucchini fries. I have not made zucchini fries, like deep fried zucchini. I totally get it. Those things are delicious. Um, so I've made something like that. And what I did was I took the zucchini, quartered it, and then I, um, I used gluten-free flour. So I, 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 I uh, rolled them in some gluten-free flour, dipped them in egg wash. I took an egg, whisked it up, dipped them in egg wash. And then I dipped them in these delicious that you can't buy anymore, gluten-free breadcrumbs. They were made from these amazing gluten-free crackers. They're not available anymore. So you could just dip them in some kind of, you know, more nutrient-dense cracker that you've crushed up or, you know, a bread that you've dried that you really like, like a really nice sourdough or something, and then pop them in the oven, maybe at 425, pop them in the oven and see how they go. Um, I, I, like I do a lot, like, this is my problem. I create every day in the kitchen, I'm making something. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And um, who cares, we still eat it. Like it still tastes decent, but not necessarily what I wanna share with people. So I would play around with that, Terry, and just uh, see how that works. See if the zucchini fries things work. But I would, I would say that probably with zucchini, because it's moist, it's got a lot of moisture content, because uh, it's a squash, I would say do the flour, egg wash, and then whatever you're coating it in, and then do them in the oven. I'm sure there are some recipes online too for healthy, healthy zucchini sticks. Roger, I feel very good about it. I'm sure you do, Roger. Hi, Kyle. Nice to see you. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Um, Terry, we do have some gluten-free crackers, so I could just smash those up. Exactly. So to smash up your gluten-free crackers, I would put them in some type of, like either between some parchment or if you've got a baggie, I hate plastic, but you know, if you've got it anyway, you know, you can keep reusing it, take a rolling pin and do it that way. So yeah, you could definitely do that. All right, everybody. I love you all. I hope this has helped and it's served. And either I will come back to you with the final result, or I will just take a picture and show it to you that way. But I love cooking with you in my kitchen and I will see you soon. Bye for now.